This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. It's the Dirty Laundry Game Worn Hockey Podcast. We're old school, right? We wash our own dirty laundry. The name on the front is a hell of a lot more important than the one on the back. I refuse to be judged by a grown man wearing a hockey jersey. Game on! Game on! podcast episode 50 holy hell uh we've had some some schedule conflicts so we're actually recording this on sunday night january the january you tell me what me keeping track of the calendar june 16th uh so people were available people are traveling all kinds of stuff so wade and i are here got a lot of stuff to talk about and it's really all all sales and and a little bit of other knowledge we gained over the weekend but but really just a, a crap ton of team sales and drastic uh, price differences, to say the least. Uh, let me start. First of all, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. It's good. I, uh, I laughed today. I have a friend who watches our show and listens, who's not really a hobbyist, but loves our show. And he actually sent me a message today and he said, hey, is there something wrong? I didn't get the, I didn't see the show pop up on Thursday or Friday. And I said, no, That's we're taping awesome. it tonight. Yeah, so um, you know, thanks Brandon for being a, a value listener and watcher, and uh, you know, we're, we're going to try to keep it moving for you. <laughs> and and anybody that that either likes and follows our Facebook page or the uh, the main hockey group, the Blues one, where we shared it, we did share, and and we'll get into the more details here in a few. Uh, did share that we were were the first ones in line for the uh, the St. Louis Blues equipment sale. So we, we try to do some media. We were not allowed. Um, they decided not to, to have us do it, which is fine. It, it's totally up to them to go in and shoot pictures ahead of time. Maybe next year we'll keep keep prodding them with it. But we'll get into more on the blue sale here in a minute. But I wanted to go around the league to some of the other ones. And also, I can't um, – It's it's been a few weeks since we've plugged it. But I uh, do want to mention Mitch and his uh, Drink Your Face Off line of shirts – and the puck bottle openers, uh, please reach out to uh, to Mitch Amaya in case you want a uh, a puck or a shirt. Wade was wearing his at the <laughs> blue sale. Sent a picture to Mitch. Of course, you'll see me both in pictures and today wearing my official uh, Dirty Laundry Game Worn Hockey Podcast uh, shirt. You can't miss the bright red. I will put a link in. Uh, a friend of mine made this shirt for me and put it in his Etsy shop in this color and a few others. So I will put that link in the, um, the video details on other places in case anybody wants to, um, to order one of those. It is a super nice, nice and cool, like silky material, very lightweight. It is, they are very comfortable. So um, if you want to get one, if you buy one, shoot me a message um, down the road. Hopefully we'll have some other kind of swag stuff. I'd like to like to have like a, a few a line of a few dirty laundry things. You looked, uh, you looked, you looked stunning in it, sitting in the parking garage for five hours. <laughs> you know what? It was comfortable, and and we'll tell <laughs> some of those stories uh, here in a minute too, because it was it was funny and a, and a great time. Again, that that camaraderie thing we talk about so much. Uh, one of the sales, one of many that happened this weekend or the last, really the last week and a half. Um, Vancouver did theirs earlier this week. Thanks to uh, Nikki Lau posting stuff on the Vancouver page. He put some pictures. So I grabbed some of those so I can have some price reference. Uh, looking at their gear prices, pads, $9.95. Of course, again, all of this money is Canadian. So if you were coming from the U.S., you'd be, do a little bit better uh, once it translates. Pads, $9.95. Blockers, three fifty. dollars uh, Gloves, I'm sorry, Glove 300, 350, blockers 300, chest protectors are were 200. 2023, and I love how they, they put this sign up. It says Mick jerseys, 22, 23, home and away, 500. Pride jerseys were 550, armed forces 200, and the uh, stick and rink practice jerseys were 125. This pricing I was blown away by, what they call premium sticks being the 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 high end guys Hughes Miller uh, those people five hundred dollars for those game used premium sticks that's wow. bad shit <laughs> I'm sorry 
Uh, normal player sticks were 150. Okay. Um, new, yeah. brand new, just never touched, never taped, never nothing. 225. That's pretty much retail for, for pro level sticks ish goalie sticks you got a little bit better deal on i think but some of the ones that i see in a rack in the picture i'm looking at for 225 is is excessive um yeah. he also posted the the uh jersey cheat sheet the skate style blank jersey no no lettering no nothing 850 dollars the home and away PG blank jersey, six fifty. Orca practice jerseys two fifty. The stick in the rink practice jerseys as I said before one twenty five. Twenty three twenty four skate style game worn jerseys seven fifty. Twenty three twenty four Orca five. Twenty three um, twenty two twenty three Orca three hundred. Home and away rack jerseys, which I think were random ones, 300, Pride 550, Armed Forces 200. That seems, especially for blanks, and I and yeah. I kind of understand it because you can't get them anywhere else, but that seems just insane, especially what we know what the teams pay for them. I think the, the rarity factor on those probably. And, the, yeah, and, and yeah, I guess that does play into it. But wow. I mean, that's that's a lot. I ha I haven't seen a ton of posts. Of course, I haven't had the time to dig into the Vancouver page to see what kind of stuff people picked up. Uh, yeah. Carolina all, also did their sale yesterday. I know season ticket holders got in early. Everybody else. Um, a couple of collectors I saw a post about it say the prices were higher than they ever have been, but I do not have any kind of official – price list or what things ran if uh, listeners out there if you went to the sale or if you've seen any of that stuff please send it to me and i'll follow up on the next podcast of what um what those things were uh ottawa holy crap um i'd have if i'd have had my uh passport ready to go and some money i'd have probably flown up there they started <laughs> their game worn jerseys at 25 dollars that that's it was wild absolutely yeah. wild and and I know they went up from there, but but regardless, buying a game worn lettered, again not knowing who was in what price range, but twenty five yeah. bucks, holy crap! I saw some star players that people were getting for like seventy five bucks a jersey. I mean that's oh god! I mean just the, that. I'll you and I had some luck in years past when the Blues did that at that price. Yeah. Get those all day long. Absolutely. Because just uh, the cost to the team for a blank is about. What one sixty ish now? I don't know what yeah. it'll be under fanatics, but roughly it's what I've been told about one sixty before being lettered. Yeah, yeah. It's uh -huh. um, it's fun to hear all the different perspectives from other franchises and what they're doing with them. Um, you know, what, the Vancouver stuff is you know all it always seems like that stuff sells high. So some impressive kind of prices there in the sense that. Um, they're still reasonable, especially when you do a conversion and figure those into U.S. dollars. Those are pretty affordable. I mean, obviously, it sounds like Ottawa was just giving stuff away. But in the same sense, you also have to think about, you know, Carolina prices are up. Vancouver prices, those are playoff teams. Ottawa is a bottom, bottom barrel, you know, low team. So maybe they're looking at it and saying, hey, the only way we can get people in here is if we make these extremely affordable. Um, and and I, some of it again, maybe too, and we'll get into it once we we get into the the blues piece. Is the the Adidas piece of this is is sure. the teams and and we don't know what all the years of this stuff they were blowing out. I know, and we'll get into Minnesota here in a minute too. We're multiple years, and it's all it's all Adidas things. So some of these teams, yeah. I think, we're just cleaning every closet out to get rid of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, which is going to be interesting, and you know, I don't want to jump the the gun on it, but you know, I think you're going to get ready to hint on it. You know, it sounds like we got a little information on how that's going to work with the Adidas stuff for this season for the for the clubhouses and for the even the team stores. So yeah, um, you know, that's that's part of it. You know, um, I don't know if I'll let you break the break the news. Hey, it, and it's it's interesting stuff. Uh, 
Uh, just before we get to St. Louis, get to Minnesota. Um, we've covered them a lot lately, but we've had to because, I mean, just all the different yeah. things that have happened with their their online store. And then they yeah. put out a bunch of stuff this past week. Um, and yeah. and I, supposedly they still have a bunch. It's unclear if it's going to show up on their website or where it is, but they still hadn't sold everything as of yesterday. But just some of the prices, uh, a lot of them were $100 even at a hundred dollars all day long. And and some of the pictures yeah. I've seen of, of people from the, the game worn, the Minnesota game worn group posting the wear those jerseys yeah. are beat up, which yeah. is, I mean, that's one that as collectors, that's one of the things we hope for. Oh, uh, absolutely. One guy, uh, first name of Mason snag Spurgeon's first home captain's Jersey for $300. Yeah. I mean, uh, it seems like are usually, super expensive i mean if people yeah. collect them or they want that that captain jersey is harder to find 300 bucks for one come on well that, and the thing about that is it, it again people keep saying oh you know minnesota knew what they were doing but like there's just seems like there's such a comedy of errors in some of these things you know i, uh, I always and, keep going back to the flurry jerseys at, at 750 when they were selling them for ten thousand in the store right 92 percent off i mean capri sauce for you know basically 90 percent off um, the Spurgeon stuff, some of these things, I, I think they've continued to do it, but it's almost like somebody's not paying attention to what they have. Well, and and by what I understand, too, and a couple other posts and things seem to have confirmed, or at least they said they've talked to people in the shop uh, because they're also unclear what if there's anything left, if it'll be posted on their website, is they're out after yeah. – after summer fanatics is doing all their sales, which yeah. unfortunate. And I was, uh, was messaging with Tiffany about that a little bit, my thoughts and, and what the past history we saw with St. Louis. And we've covered that on past podcasts, just the, the quick, um, the quick notes of um, when you called a sales rep down there, five different people got five different prices. Yeah. So you you yeah. can't operate that way because we're a tight community. If somebody, starts going well i was told this price well i was told that price for the same it, it's yeah. it's just it's stupid so That's the same. that goes all the way back with them to the steiner days and, and they ended up you know fanatics you know obviously bought steiner and i think they they hired a bunch of those people and they've employed employed the same tactic as far as a sales because you know i can tell you going back to the early 2000s they were doing the same stuff with game use yankee stuff and ranger stuff going all the way back you know, it depended on who your rep was. It depended on, I hate to say how much you bought. It depended on what your account looked like. But the price list from one to the other was different. And plus you had a bunch of sales guys who were trying to make money based on commission. So, you know, they were offering prices, you know, to try to make more money for themselves in some cases and not necessarily running off the list. Sure. No, you're you're correct. Um, but it, it, it's... It's, it's hard. It's hard. To buy it. So yeah, I'm sure. I'm hoping for the fans, the Minnesota fans and collectors, that it's more things are more locked in because the other yeah. thing that happens is if people start seeing this same pattern, I think yeah. you're gonna have a lot of people avoid it unless they really yeah. need to have some particular player. Well, one thing I want to give kudos to a lot of the Minnesota collectors is the one thing I I haven't seen is a lot of flip stuff. And I think that there's a lot of, I think there some level people are a little scared to do it because it seems like people have already made comments like, Hey, Oh, here, here comes the people buying to flip, but there has been very, very, very few pop up. That's one thing I've been kind of watching the eBay to see how many oh, yeah. Minnesota jerseys pop up. And there hasn't really been a lot. And it seems like a few of the people that have listed stuff or mentioned things have said like, Oh, I got this. I'm looking to trade it for, for something else, not necessarily sell it. So, you know, good for them. That's a great collecting community up there. So, so good stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, so now on to St. Louis, our bread and butter, since we were there and, and we know, we, we know what's going on and, and all that kind of great stuff. The, uh, equipment sale was spread over two days, Friday and Saturday. The Friday was five 30 to seven 30 for season ticket holders or people that had the, the ticket to get in. It is a ticketed event. Um, and to clarify that at least, and I don't know how it works with other teams is they load it to your team account, Ticketmaster, however you want to say it, you're able to transfer that to other people. And I know a lot of 
of season ticket holders that weren't going. That's how I got in. That's how Wade got in. Um, and it, and you can bring a second person with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I, we've piggybacked in for years. Yeah. Um, it's not the you know, my, Yeah. No, my schedule doesn't really allow me to be a season ticket holder. It's not, you know, cognizant. My business has, has access. So I get to do that a lot. Um, luckily I have some friends that always make sure that we're able to have the access on, on the, um, first night. And of course me and you were the first two there. Yes. Um, got there about, what was it? Right. You got there about 12, 15. I made it about 12, 30 yeah. behind you. Uh, yeah. and, and at least it was helpful it is enterprise center has a nice parking deck attached right to their building. And a, normally the, the entrance is on the far side of the, the building. Um, one of their basic side entrances, it's still a main entrance for, for game days, but they usually have you come in through there. You used to, you go through a metal detector in years past and then do the sale. Um, this year they put us in basically the little vestibule of the parking garage, which was really yeah. nice because it was 95 degrees in St. Louis <laughs> on Friday. So we yeah. got in there, and and again, I was packing for expecting to be sitting outside. Did bring chairs, packed a cooler with some ice and uh, ice water and Gatorade in it. You'd brought some Gatorade as well. Get in there, slightly stuffy, but not in the sun. No, and, not outside. You know that that humidity, that famous yeah. St. Louis humidity. So it was just um, shady enough. The way the sun was hitting the building is there was the sun wasn't yeah. directly coming into our area. And it was funny because you had a lot of employees coming in and out of those. Yeah. Doors. Every time they open a door, the air conditioning would blow in, into <laughs> our area. So it was a nice little, nice little cool off. And then yeah. um, uh, a nice, another collector um, friend from the area, him and his son came down and he brought three, no four battery yeah. operated DeWalt fans that'll run like 10 hours. So put them in front of all of us, turned up the air and it was, it was perfect. Game changer. <laughs> yes. I mean, we were comfortable. We were BSing the four of us uh, for the longest yeah. time. We were, we were the only four there for what, about yeah. two and a half hours, three hours. Yeah, which is, It's just funny because you know, like we kind of laugh. I mean, every year is a little different and, and I, I have to give, I have to say one thing. I feel a lot safer with on the, the, Friday afternoon rather than, you know, in the past when we've stayed outside overnight, um, St. Louis is kind of famous for some of its issues down there. Um, so it's nice to not have to sleep outside the uh, right. building overnight anymore. Yeah. Um, but it was where they put us was really nice. Um, you know, usually in years past by one or two, there was usually 10 or 15 of us. Um, and I, and again, I think a few people made the comment and I'll agree. And it's not a knock on the blues. Um, it, it's not a knock on them because I think they're doing really well in providing us year round opportunities with give smart and with the, the program that they have going with ringside reserve. But I think there was a less of a draw for it because people are able to, um, complete and find items for their collections year round on those two sites. But the draw isn't there, especially when people don't think there's jerseys or have already gotten opportunities at skates and sticks and gloves and helmets. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I've talked to so many people that weren't going because all oh, the several last several years have just been a disappointment. And you know what? And I yeah. get it. We go anymore to to hang out and have a good time. And yeah. And neither one of us had really planned to buy anything, and we'll get oh, into no. that here in a minute. But as we're sitting there, another gentleman joined us, um, kind of sitting off to the side. We invited him over, started talking to him, and he um, has a, a sad but cool story he shared with us. He's uh, one of the new members of the St. Louis Blues uh, Warrior Hockey Team. It is veterans that have some level of disability there's teams all over the country now for that yeah. but the st louis warriors is a huge program we talked to him he was coming in looking for some gear to play with he just recently started playing with that team uh an awesome guy it was great to meet him oh, yeah. i need to track him down i did not get his contact info because i want to I, I did so i'll pass okay. it on to you after the show um, yeah get and, me and down. what a great guy and you know what that like you know we always talk about the friendships and camaraderie in this hobby and i think that was a really fun and it was a touching moment because you know like you said he kind of got there and was sitting a little bit away from us we offered him a chair he came over we all started talking he told us his story and and 
you know, it was funny was in the process of us hunting through the thing. I, I bumped back into him. Um, he's, you know, we said, you know, gave our dues. He had an armful of stuff that was going to work for him for his hockey moving forward. And, you know, like we had a great time sitting around with a group of people and enjoyed a lot of good banter and conversation and hobby experience and knowledge. And, you know, it's one of my, you know, here, listen, like you said, I don't think either of us went down there specifically to buy anything. I know I didn't besides maybe a little bit of apparel and picking up a few things that I was going to give to other people. But what I did get to do was enjoy my time with my friends. Oh yeah. And, and you know? connect with more guys and, and Hey, yeah. what are you looking for? I'm kind of, here's my general idea. If I can find this great, if not, whatever. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what it is, is different people were going different things. And as we got toward the last hour, hour and a half, the line started building more and it was started with, with the last half hour before it was starting to snake out up the stairs through the garage. I went to my car to put all my stuff away about 20 minutes before. And it was, the line was back pretty far. Um, the, uh, the blues came out, uh, about five minutes ish before it officially opened, opened the doors there to scan our tickets, took us to a second checkpoint for lack of a better word said, Hey, we'll give you the, the queue right at five 30. Uh, and I'll link some pictures in the, um, on the YouTube and other places. So you can kind of see the, the long line of people behind us. We didn't get a ton of pictures, uh, but we did get some decent amounts. So we'll get those posted yeah. up there as well. Um, and uh, probably about 60 people in line would be my guess. Uh, um, 50 to 60. Oh, I would see. I was pushing about 150 when, okay. when they opened the doors because as far I, as it went back in the garage. Oh yeah. yeah. Just I, in our, in the first group that they let, let in, there's probably 50 or 60 of us standing inside. Yes, is probably yes. the best way to put it. Um, so, they handle it. It's so well organized. I mean, they do oh, really yeah. do an amazing job. And we were joking with security right there on the inside before they, they let us in. Cause they're like, Oh, you don't run. Don't do that. And it was just, <laughs> was just being, being funny is that all the staff was amazing. It was a great time. Uh, our buddy, Nick, who we deal with on the rinkside reserve side, popped out at one point, check in, see how yeah. we were doing. Um, yeah. Talked to us for a few. And then in we went and, and actually let me back up a step uh, about what an hour 45 minutes to an hour before the blues media department put out a rapid fire walkthrough video of, of everything. So yeah. most, mostly the game worn stuff and a few other things or game use related stuff, few other things, but we zapruded that film to death <laughs> uh, using, uh, and some people were on it on, on Facebook. I went to X formerly Twitter, you know, that mess. In, in X, you can actually slow the video down to 0.25% of the normal speed. So I ran through it, almost attempted to frame by frame, but the guy shooting it went so quick. Even at that point, I still had to stop it, back it up, see things. But you could see, get general idea of, okay, there's a whole bunch of gloves. You could see some of the prices. You could see how many yeah. sets of goalie pads there were. You could see the big rack of sticks. And, and a lot yeah. of times where the price signs were, you could see at least what those were going to be. So, so we were all doing the, everybody had their phones out doing video breakdowns of, okay, well, this is over here and that's over there. And they yeah. get all the way through the end. The last part we see um, the locker room nameplates. So we, we all get our kind of get our plans together at that point is okay. We see, here's this stuff. They do let us in. We get down that way. Uh, one of the first things I grabbed going by were socks. And a couple <laughs> ask, I had a couple people ask for heritage the heritage style socks and when the video i saw them there and and grabbed a couple pairs for for five bucks a piece yeah. um, i picked up a a, a white pair a, a way pair uh for myself so yeah. i mean those are easy to grab on just a quick buzz by it's not like you gotta look yeah. to see okay well who wore these and that I, it, they're socks <laughs> okay so yeah when I kind of yeah. went over, they had a decent pile of skates. Um, of course, for those, they have carpet down, and they do have chairs there for people to try those on. Uh, goalie pads, I think, were next on the right side. Sticks were uh, next on the left. Sticks were 125 uh, for yeah. regular, and then if they were signed, I think they were 150 yep. um, Goalie pads were 500 Gloves and blockers were 250 each. Uh Player gloves, if they were 
like traded players, former players, whatever, they were 125, and the other players still on the team were 150. Yeah. Um, for that, um, pants, they had just the covers, uh, breezer covers were 25 or 50, and then the full, full fledged, like regular hockey pants were 75. A lot of those were still in plastic bags. I mean, it had never been worn by anybody. There were a handful of worn pair. You even found a, a pair of referee pants, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. So it's yeah, like you was- provide those to those guys, but yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, I'm sure they were in there for whatever reason. It was kind of that was I, funny. Um, <laughs> I was looking you know, for like, a pair of '90s style pants. They didn't yeah. have any in there, unfortunately. You know, the one thing we were talking about too is like you know you said run, kind of going in. You know, we were in the front line as the first people there, and I think you know like for me like as you said we there was nothing really i needed there was nothing like especially after we saw the video so i mean i went straight to the pads and grabbed pads and blockers for for friends who needed those and and they wanted to stop at the sticks first and you know we kind of coordinated an effort to make sure that at least some of that more unique stuff or some of the stuff that was a little bit rare or there or that was going to go right away that we made sure that people got what they wanted. And that's important part of the hobby. I think was oh, yeah. like, you know, like for me, it was, you know, if there was a rack of jerseys. I would have hoped that somebody would have known what I wanted and went over there to that. Um, they did have the, the, obviously the practice jerseys, but that, that doesn't appeal to my collection. Um, but you know, we were able to help, help everybody out. I, I mean, me and you ended up spending quite a bit of time uh, at the nameplate stand and, yeah, is, we and we get through a bunch get through that main stuff that um yeah because i think that was the initial end of of used related stuff and then you yeah. get to apparel and it was everything from season ticket holder giveaway apparel to regular store stuff uh yeah. marked down a lot of the the reverse retro the yellow jerseys the blues war yeah. and stuff and they had if you were a just somebody that wanted a jersey to wear around the reverse retros were what 50 bucks, I think. Yeah, something um, crazy. The player I mean, ones were, I think, yeah, everything was 75% off. They were of the that. indie, the Indo Edge ones, which yeah. is fine. Um, but they had a rack of, they had a rack of player jerseys, current player jerseys from, you know, they were team store ones and not officially stitched, but I think those were half off as well. So I think those were like 125 or 150. So if you're a fan and you're just wanting a Cairo jersey to wear to a game, or I mean, I saw Hayes jerseys, I saw a bunch of the guys. I mean, that's a, you know, here, if you're a fan or you're a season ticket holder and you're not a game use collector, what a, that's a great deal at the end right. of the day. Yeah. And, you know, and all if, off. other than the, I mean, it, and it's the last season you're going to have that design, but who, I mean, seeing what people wear to games, I mean, they wear stuff. Yeah. It, it's not going to have to be current. So good for oh. anybody to pick those up. And then we, yeah, we get in past all that apparel and then there's a, a, a table just chock full of nameplates going, God, going back. Um, I think as far as back as six or seven years, those, yeah. those smaller just had just a name on them. Um, and, and yeah, we spent, you and I both spent a lot of time going through there. And then uh, as, as we, we found ones we wanted for a reason, I grabbed, I grabbed quite a few of jerseys of players I have. So it's like, you know what? Yeah. I can, could put those two together with them. And, and I wanted like some of the, just the designs of the name plates or goalies, of course, since I'm a, yeah. a goalie as well. So yeah, I went through them and uh, the crowds for a while were super busy. And, and we found it was actually a bar top there. Um, ran into another, uh, another friend of ours, Michelle. She's a, a little bit of a game worn collector and that touch base with her, showed her the name plate. She went through a bunch of them. Uh, and then at different times, like, you know what, I'm going to take another pass around. So one of the rest of us would stay with everybody's stuff and somebody else would go walk around, not having to carry things. Yeah. And like I said, it opened at five 30. We were really, cause I looked at my watch. We were really did our first initial settle at like 10 to six. Yeah. Yeah, we were up there just kind of going through and and looking through stuff, and then just kind of watching, hanging out, and then um, uh, and we'll yeah, get we stayed till the end. I mean, as pathetic yeah. as it is, we stayed we were there we actually... for, for the full two hours. <laughs> things got really quiet, so it's like you know what, let's take another walk around. And and as we walk back, and again, don't know if they restock some things afterwards or whatnot. You and I both found a pair of uh, of Ryan O'Reilly game used gloves. I photo matched mine already. I'm working on photo matching yours. Yeah, my, it, it was fun. I mean, what a yeah. fun night. I mean, I actually almost went back on Saturday 
Um, but I, I realized like that would just be kind of overkill. And I picked up a couple, couple pullovers. I wear a lot of quarter zips in real life and I was able to get a couple quarter zips for, you know, 25 bucks that normally would have been in the team store, 79, 80 bucks. Oh, so sure. I picked up a couple $10 t-shirts and, um, picked up, like we were talking about the nameplates. I'm not really a collector of those besides I've started to grab a couple every year of guys I like or guys I collect. And then a bunch of them I grabbed. And to be honest with you, they've already been mailed out to friends as thank you gifts or gifts for whatever. And, um, you know, but the fun part was where we were standing, we were right where the line kind of started to build. So we were actually able to say hi to a bunch of collectors and people yeah, that people that, that we've known or yeah. Yeah. And so like people that follow the podcast or people that know us from the blues group or the, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, what a fun, what a, it's something, I mean, I don't go there to spend a bunch of money as long as they don't have jerseys. I go there for the camaraderie and the friendship and to see people I don't get to see. Yeah, nameplates were five bucks a piece. I mean, even if you didn't yeah. have or want to spend a lot of money, you found your favorite yeah. player, whatnot. Great, it's five bucks. And yeah, those for sure. nameplates, because they're all kind of different designs um, and different sizes, they're all really cool. Um, no, absolutely. There's some neat stuff there, and um, you know, some some it's it's what a, it's just fun. I mean, like yeah. I can't tell if you don't go on Friday, go on Saturday. You've got just the same chance to get stuff. Because they, um, they basically split, uh, as we we found out from the, the team, is they split the stuff up. So if there's six or ten sets of pads, you'll get five the first day and then five the second. Um, so, yeah, it's an, if you're not – if if that's what you're going for and you're way back in the line, unfortunately, they're probably going to be gone. But they at least keep things very even. So yeah. that, that's – You have the opportunity on the second day. Yeah. It's not like you struggle on the second day, you don't have a chance at anything good. Right. And, and again, some stuff like game jerseys, if they, and they, they did not have any, but they, they did add some, uh, we got some pictures, both of us did from one of our friends. Uh, they threw some, some of the old, which is funny. They still had them hanging around Reebok, uh, home jerseys, um, the made in Canada blanks. So yeah. if, you, if somebody, and one was a goalie cuts, if you wanted somebody from that time frame, you could send it off and get it lettered. Yeah. It'd be a, a nice authentic, um, for at a reasonable price, but um, their, I mean, their pricing was was fine. I say overall the amount I was kind of disappointed in, but we did yeah. talk to um Nick from the uh, the Blues who runs Rinkside, manages all that kind of stuff, and their plan is for the game use stuff is is those kind of things will be either on their website or through their auction. And a lot of teams have gone that way. I get that. I, I'm not faulting them. It's their business decision. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where we'll have to buy it from. We know how the, the program works. I'm hoping yeah. down the road, maybe things will change because of the glut of stuff I know they have, but, yeah. but we, t we talked to them to him for quite a bit on that, um, which, which is great. And just the fact that, that he, he is very comfortable and especially I think because and we talked about it while we were, we're having our conversation is we had him at your expo uh, last year and how impressed they were with that. They plan Barring what the NHL schedule is, which will be reached next month, they plan on coming um, this October as well, which is phenomenal. And we talked uh, about planning some other stuff. Yeah. You know? uh, so what, what the asking him what his kind of the procedure is or what things are looking like for fanatics, which which again um, gave and I don't think it's anything that's that's a hush hush secret stuff like that because he told us if it was is. And I'm assuming it's across the league. It sounds like it is. Is teams are going to be allowed to sell fanatics or sorry, Adidas branded merchandise till about mid season yeah. before they have to get rid of it? Because you know teams have so much stock of that. Yeah. If they didn't blow it out on their summer sales or or just mark it down crazy, they're still going to have it. It's like, what do you do with it? So we did also uh, an, an interesting thing because you're, I'll let you tell this part of the story, uh, training camp jerseys. Yeah. Um, we've been, we've been hounding them for the, uh, for the training camp jerseys for a couple of years. And um, obviously those are kept off site at the practice facility and, you know, they, they've been trying to get them as well to, to get them out of there. Um, you know, they're going to be able to allowed to wear those and keep those till again, mid season. So it sounds like, it sounds through, like through the training camp time anyway. Training camp at least, yeah. And it sounds like at least um, it sounds like that 
I think they're planning for the Fanatic stuff. They'll be ready. And he said that seems like it's going well. But I also think that, you know, these equipment staff guys always want to make sure they have plenty of stuff. So I'm sure they're not looking to get rid of that stuff too soon. But I, I think we'll end up getting those uh, made available. And I think there's and, a lot of collectors that would love to add one of oh, those. Yeah. Collections. I know I would. And what those um, look like, um, and, and I know every team does them a little bit different, at least for what St. Louis does, is they are the Adidas practice style in different colors, but they have Velcro on the back, and then you put – they're numbered, and then you have whatever the, the player's Velcro nameplate on there. We've yeah. seen ones, older ones, like the, the Reebok style ones, pop up occasionally. I swear they still have those around somewhere because they've yeah, got they, a huge amount. They've never of showed up. I've seen an Oshi one and a couple other ones over the years that have kind of like – matriculated their way into the hobby but like yeah. you just don't see those and you know like um i would i definitely would love one for my collection oh. and, and it, we'll it's, see. I mean, it's a cheaper way to to get a player you like because yeah and and again nick being as gracious as he is says he hopes to do it this way where they'll the name plates will if it's Hi, Ru. That nameplate, the Velcro nameplate, will be with it and stuff instead of separating them. He yeah. he gets that because you want that connection. Well, if I can buy a Cairo training camp jersey for call it two hundred bucks or whatever, yeah. compared to twelve hundred for a game jersey, yeah. okay, I might do that. Yeah, it's not. I haven't seen it worn in a game, but you know, it's it's been used several seasons. And there's a lot of people that prospect, and and I also have a few friends in Springfield who you know, kind of have been asking me like, Hey, are those available? Cause there's guys that are up in our minor league system that maybe don't make the NHL team that are our AHL affiliate players over the years that those guys are fans of, and they'd love to have that connection to St. Louis and one of their favorite AHL players as well. So um, definitely would love to get our hands on those someday. Yeah. So I, I think it'd be interesting to see. And, and if you're dialed into whoever your team that you follow is, let us know, if if your people are talking what you're hearing because i i think a lot of this stuff is is league wide what what the rules yeah. are being set for merchandise and different things and yeah. because of this transition and and i totally get it but if you're hearing things from equipment guys or game use merch reps or whatever please share it with us and and we can we will if if oh yeah this is off the record don't say what team we we will can at least put out Hey, other teams have been told this, or other teams are saying this. We won't be team specific if if it's more yeah. off the record stuff. We definitely will uh, say as somebody that, that was involved in regular media like that with getting fed uh, not secret information, but but stuff like that. Um, I trust me, I understand that. So, yeah. um, but it, it's, I mean, we're only mid June, and I know there's going to be more sales out there. And, yep. and we will cover those, but it, but again, it was, it was a fun time running into people, talking to people. Like I said, you and I both got messages Saturday from people that were there getting stuff sure. and um, everybody yeah, seemed to really have a good time. Yeah, it was well, it was well put together. There's plenty of places to check out the line moved fast. Um, they did do the one thing that we, that they did the sticks um, that were up front were, kind of redundant and there weren't a ton of them, but they did do something kind of fun on the back end of it this year. They had a, a spin wheel where you could, I think it was $150. You could take a spin on the wheel and they had some of the more star players and some of the, you know, rookie up and comers at like the bull Dukes, the neighbors, and they had some Krugs and some uh, Hofer and Bennington's. And I didn't see it early on. So I'm assuming they had more of those type of player sticks and you could basically buy a chance to spin the wheel and then, get a rack, a stick off the rack. So that, that was fun, a fun way yeah. to, you know, gamble a little bit into trying to get maybe a little bit more expensive stick. And it mean, um, it's not like you mean. weren't going to get a stick. Yeah. You're getting uh, somebody. Yeah. It wasn't like you get like, no, you didn't get anything. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your 150 bucks. Yeah. Um, but you know, that was neat. I enjoyed, I, I thought that was cool. Um, you know, segueing back into Springfield, they did their equipment and, um, apparel sale the weekend before um, in Springfield, Massachusetts for the Thunderbirds. Um, I actually have that list and we could probably post that as well. But they had, man, a few hundred jerseys going back two or three years. Some really, actually a little further than that, they had blanks from earlier than than that. But as far as the game used in game issue jerseys, they had had some really, really nice stuff. 
um, in the, I want to say, I think they started in the three or 400 range. Yeah, and, and I thought the up. pricing was, was very yeah. good. Yeah. No. Um, and I think that, like they did theirs, um, in person. And when, when I talked to my, my friend in that organization, he made the comment that the reason they were doing it that way is they really wanted to get people in to buy out some of their apparel, um, and some of the other stuff. And the jerseys were a good draw because they, I know they sold a ton of them, um, and I know that they're going to be putting the remaining stuff online in the next few weeks is what, what I was kind of told. So that's kind of cool. Um, they do. I think they do a great job up there as well. Um, so that was, that was fun. I was able to, um, I luckily have some, a friend who, who was gracious enough to help me out up there. So, um, you know, good, good for Springfield. Nice to hear that they're doing well with their stuff as well. And their jerseys are just so pretty. I just love oh, yeah. all the stuff up there. And then this sometime around this time next year, I'll have two teams to cover St. Louis and then the, uh, the Bloomington Bison East coast. Yeah. It's, I know it's East coast level sale compared to uh, the NHL, but it will be interesting to see how things are done and, and stuff like that. So I guess upcoming, the Detroit one is coming soon. I guess their sale is soon. I Paul and I had kind of mentioned that. So that one's going to be upcoming. Um, do you know of any other ones that are coming up summer sales? Um, not off the top of my head. So one other one that I got some information on, um, everybody knows that, I think everybody knows that the the Ducks typically sell their stuff all on eBay through Beckett Media. Um, and I actually kind of have a connection there. And I asked if they've seen jerseys and he, he talked to the guy that handles listing the jerseys and they haven't really seen anything coming in yet, which I thought was a little interesting. Right. So I don't know what's going on there, but this would usually be the time of year you'd start to see all those duck jerseys popping up on eBay. Um, and again, they have some they have some pretty crazy stuff. And I know they're they're supposed to be. I think they're rebranding into uh, going back to the 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 duck stuff more than the stuff they've worn the last couple of years. So it sounds like we're, we're going to have some some color. Um, color changes and style changes moving into this fanatics era. So that's going to be interesting. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, I did just find another one. The Golden Knights plan to host their what they call their battle worn authentics equipment sale <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday, June 26th. At the I City. love the name. Yeah, I do too. I love that. City National Arena. Um, after a sales, a, a series of pre sale opportunities for season ticket members, the sale will open to the public from three to six on rink A. Uh, nice. Battle worn authentic features gate player used in team issued equipment and apparel, including sticks, gates, gloves, jerseys, shoes, helmets, jackets, shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Yeah. Um, I wish the Blues gave us shoes. They never seem to give us the tennis shoes. I I like them. I've had people laugh because I had David Perron's years ago, and they yeah, yeah. stuff, but they look good and they're good. I mean, they're expensive ass yeah. tennis shoes. If I was, we haven't them. seen the shoes. I don't think we've seen the shoes in quantity since the Reebok changeover. I remember that year I, they had a pretty good number of them, and I think at one point they had a few boxes of Adidas stuff mixed in with some Reebok stuff a couple of years ago. Yeah, I did get a pair of Adidas ones. They were fine. The only problem is, is because they're that training shoe. Yeah. If you go on a wet floor. You will yeah. bust your butt. It's <laughs> because it's designed to be on, like on carpet or a workout mat. Yeah. Or if you're on anything that's wet, you'll slide around. I've almost fallen oh, a few man. times. Uh, let's see. The interesting part with this too for the Vegas one, it says fans un unable to attend the equipment sale in person will be able to access online only offerings uh, at VegasTeamStore.com beginning cool. at 9 a.m. on June 26th. That's so nice. to see what they drop there. Um, yeah. If you're out of town, people, um, you may have an op uh, option. Interesting. Um, that's Very the fun. only other one that I'm digging up quickly. I should have did a little bit of more searching around. Um, and we no, need to I mean, have a next year. We'll try and remember run like a checklist is get all the teams and go. Okay, are they having one? Or here's what the date is, so we can cross out who's done theirs, or at least put out like a chart. Yeah, absolutely. It's been been a fun, fun run of them lately. 
Oh so. yeah. Um, and we appreciate other people taking pictures and putting out info. Like I said, I mentioned uh, Nikki in Vancouver with his pictures, uh, the people in the wild group posting some of the prices so we can reference that. We do appreciate that. And I understand sometimes people don't want to share what they paid for stuff. I get it. But if, yeah. if you're, if you don't want to share what you paid individually, even if you take pictures of the lists and things that are at the sale, great. Um, thank you. It does. It helps us. It helps the hobby just even to compare what teams are where in their pricing. I yeah. mean, Vancouver, that, that seems killer. Um, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to a couple of people. I do know that got stuff from, from Carolina. I'm just curious to see what theirs were running. Cause uh, yeah. again, a few comments I saw said the most expensive ever. So uh, didn't, now didn't Los Angeles just do one as well. They did, and I have seen little details on it. Um, I don't, yeah, me too. I didn't really see a lot. I didn't know. Um, I, I, yeah, that's always an interesting one, too. Hey, one, one topic to jump into or, while we're kind of finishing this up is, um, the, the Utah Hockey Club had released their home and away jerseys. Um, I think we should get into that when we get a couple more people on the, yeah, I Cal definitely want to touch on that. I, yeah. I wasn't terribly we impressed. Actually, <laughs> excuse me. We were talking about it. A lot of us were talking about it uh, while waiting in line for the blue sale and, and reactions were very mixed. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't terribly impressed. Some people liked the idea of it. I just saw there were some opportunities for them to do some other stuff. And, you know, we've already, you know, we could talk about that at a later date yeah. on more of a uh, uh, group setting, but uh, I think it's interesting. I like the colorway is what surprised me the most. It's very similar, in my opinion, to the Seattle colorway. So that that kind of yeah. yeah you but know, you the, assume that that they're gonna. I mean, unless I, I don't expect a drastic swing from that after yeah. the season when they go to their official team name. But it'll yeah. it'll definitely be interesting to uh, to see what they do. Absolutely, it's, it's gonna be you know fun. No dimples this year. No, um, that and and we've said it a few other times in podcasts talking about it is the teams we have uh, insiders at that have given us information, laid their hands on them, said they are very plain. Yeah, the, I, I get the, it. The, I mean, and and again, and for anybody that doesn't understand, the dimples are the shoulder dimples that are on all the jerseys around the league. That and that was an Adidas thing that when they first came out, we all thought was weird, and now we've all fallen in love with. Right. <laughs> yes because how many times have people even use them i've seen people use them um uh, photo matching because you count, yeah. count them across and uh yeah. the jersey's different so just a weird ways we match and do other stuff episode 50 in the books wow. covered a ton of sales we miss uh paul and justin and some of our other our people that join us uh just uh Again, we've had scheduling stuff. Originally, we were going to record Thursday night, and then Paul reminded me conveniently that uh, there was a, a kind of an important game to watch on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, crazy one last night. That Whew. Florida needed a – I don't want to say – they didn't need a wake-up call because they've been rolling over everybody. But but Florida just needed a reality check, and I expect the next game them to come just pissed and, and oh my I don't God. see I think uh, Edmonton doing that twice. No, I mean, I mean, Edmonton has the the horses to do it, but man, that if anything is going to get Florida locked in, it's going to go one of two ways: either they are going to be absolutely locked in, or they're going, you know, or this maybe you'll see the biggest the collapse ever. Yeah, no kidding. I, but, I yeah. think Bob um, and and I saw a tweet this morning from Matthew Kachuk that says uh, those eight goals weren't Bob's fault; they were our fault. Yeah, no, I, well, I mean, I think he only gave about four or five of them, and yeah. You know, realistically, I mean, I still think he's probably, if they win the cup, still the favorite for the Conn Smythe at this oh, point. Oh, I, I agree. So yeah. we'll see what His happens. His jerseys have been funny. His jerseys have been funny. Um, I, just a, one more caveat before we leave. Huh? Um, the Migre has some of his Columbus jerseys, and for the longest time they were on the website for six ninety five, And I believe that they, over the weekend, have raised them to nine ninety five. Uh, the remaining ones they started to sell, and then I think that the prices went up on those. But again, that's a two time Vezina, probably now a Con Smythe, and almost certainly a Hall of Fame guy. So even and a, at a thousand, uh, yeah, and could be a Stanley Cup winner, we'll know in another yeah, few days. Yeah. So, so that's that's a pretty pretty good price for a thousand, it's still pretty pretty cheap considering what 
Mark Andre Fleury jerseys go for him, and you right. know, skies of his era, you know, uh, Lundquist and and so on. But yeah, and, and it'll be interesting to see too once once this is all done and compare the prices of Edmonton and Florida's Cup jerseys. Finals, yeah, be, what be they, wild. What they go for, is... especially considering now that Edmonton has those in house and yep. Florida does theirs in house. That's going to be. And those are both two ravenous collector group and areas. So it'll be, oh, it'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah. So we shall see. Number 50. Yep. Number 50 wrapped it up. Um, we uh, hope everybody also had a, a, a great father's day and, and enjoyed that wherever you were. And uh, with that, we will, I'm traveling starting Wednesday. So I'll be gone when, basically Wednesday to Wednesday. I hope to do a show the following Thursday, just scheduling and some other stuff. Um, if not, we'll do some alternate scheduling and releases, get them out there. What well, we appreciate the likes, the follows, share it with your friends. If you know other collectors that haven't listened or whatever, love to see us continue to, uh, to climb the charge with likes and stuff like that. We appreciate all the support. Um, if you want to come on, talk about something, reach out to one of us. We'd love to have you on cover what you collect or different things. And we'll see you next time.